Just blow your paper. Yeah. Good. Hi, I'm Bob Larimer, the emergency manager. Hi, Bob. I'm Linda Parker. Hi, Linda. This is my son, Zach. Zach, nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. I understand that you're on a fact-finding mission. Yes, I am. All right, well, let's go back to my office. Talk. Okay. Let's go. It's right back this way. Thank you for seeing us. You're welcome. Thank you for coming by. Well, Zach, how can I help you? Well, I wanted to ask you some questions about our community so I could put it in my family's disaster plan. Okay, shoot. Hey, well, what disasters could happen here? Well, our community is impacted by a lot of different disasters. Floods, fires, thunderstorms, tornadoes. Oh, and remember when we had that train derailment last year that spilled all that hazardous material? Zach, that was a really good question. You know, it's important that we know about hazards that happen in our area, but it's also really important that we know about hazards that happen in places other than here. Really? Why is that necessary? Well, Linda, because the hazards that happen in the places where you travel on vacation or maybe have business trips may or may not be the same as those that we face right here. But isn't that a lot to remember? You're right, Zach. It, it really is. But I guess the good news is that a lot of the steps that you take to prepare for one disaster or one hazard are the take to prepare for other hazards. All right, I've got this guide. I'd love for you both to bring it home, take a look at it with your family. This guide has a lot of the same information that you have in the book that you brought with you, but also has protective actions to take for very, very specific hazards. Yeah, look, it's even got pictures and maps and everything. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, uh, but how would we know if something's about to happen? That's a good question, too. But you already know something about warning systems, Zach. Um, think about when your fire alarm goes off at school. Oh, yeah. In fact, we just had a drill the other day. Well, you know, our community uses a variety of different warning systems. Um, local radio and television stations often warn of bad weather, which may even close your school. Oh, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. But we also use, you know, the Internet. We use pagers. We use cell phones as part of our warning system as well. You know, sometimes we even find it necessary to go door to door to warn people, like during that train derailment last year. Mm -hmm. We also recommend that each family have a NOAA weather radio that has a tone alert feature. What's a NOAA? Well, NOAA stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. See, they operate a nationwide network of radio stations broadcasting continuous weather information. Bob, I was thinking about evacuations. Okay. What are our community's plans for evacuation? Well, Linda, we often try to find routes that we can take, and we try to use the same routes, but as you know, quite often that can change. So it's really important that we listen to the radio or television for specific instructions as far as which routes to take, and also where we can find shelters for emergencies. All right. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, it does. Okay. Now, we've spent a lot of time talking about plans for our own community, but it's really important that you find out what emergency plans are in place, say, at Zach School or even places where you work. That is a very good point. You know, I guess it is very important to make sure that all plans work together. It really is. Bob, thank you so much for taking time to see us. I really appreciate it. It's my job. And you know what? Keep in mind that the American Red Cross and other disaster service organizations have a lot of information that can help you as you put together your plan for your family. Just feel free to call on any of us. Okay. I guess we are making progress. We sure are.